This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another sculpting video. Today, I'm entering the world of anime and I'm sculpting my first character, Ryuk from Death Note. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I am very new to anime, but I do have a couple friends that are pretty well versed in it, namely Nerdy Crafter. She helped me out a little bit before this video, so thank you, Nerdy Crafter. I really appreciate that. Ryuk is actually a character that you guys have been requesting for a very long time. This is another subscriber request video. And one day I went and I looked him up and he could not be more up my alley. His design is absolutely amazing. I love how creepy he is. He's tall, he's gangly and he's everything that I want in a sculpture. So I'm really excited to bring him to you today. And then if you like this video and you like this sort of anime series that I'm starting, let me know which characters you want to see me make next. Now just to give you a very quick background on the character, Ryuk is a fictional character in the series Death Note. He is a bored Shinigami that drops a Death Note, a notebook that allows the user to kill anyone simply by knowing their name and face into the human world in order to have relief from his boredom. So like I said, very quick recap, but I like it. <laughs> Before we get started with this video i just want to invite you to follow me on instagram and twitter i'm at ace of clay so if you want more content from me be sure to check me out there i'm also in my facebook group snakes of clay i'd love to see you there too and now without further ado let's make ryuk all right i've got his armature started here used some aluminum wire we got some super sculpey ultralight to bulk out the torso added the arms, and then a little bamboo skewer for his neck. This guy has got a pretty interesting composition. He's very gangly, very tall. His arms are really long, and he's got a ton of detail that I'm really excited to do. And I think let's start adding the clay. Now for this project, I'm gonna be using Super Sculpey Original. This is it in beige, and I just feel like using this today. I'll probably use um, Super Sculpey Firm for his head, but for his body, let's do some original. And I've also got some cos clay. He's got some pretty cool looking like feathery shoulder pieces going on there. So we'll probably use the cos clay for that. And let's just get started. So for the first step, I'm just going to cover all of the armature in clay. I'm gonna put some flat sheets over the torso and then I'm going to bulk out the legs and the arms. He's got very skinny legs and very skinny arms and he's just covered in folds and wrinkles and you guys know how much I love sculpting those. So this is gonna be a pretty fun, like mindless process for me. All right, so I'm gonna start by covering that torso with some even sheets of my Super Sculpey and then I'm gonna work my way down to the legs and then of course onto the arms. I'll probably do the arms in a separate bake. I'm not worried about it being super smooth just yet. I'm gonna start covering the leg armature with some clay like that. Start bulking out the thighs and get the shape figured out. So I'm basically gonna shape out his entire body and then add details on top of that. He's kind of like Edward Scissorhands in the sense where he doesn't have any like baggy clothes. So I'm sculpting a bare model and then I'm just gonna go on top of that with some folds and wrinkles. All right, now by the looks of it, I just went back to my reference photo and these thighs are a little too big. So let's cut them down with my Excel blade. Use code Ace of Clay at ExcelBlades.com to get 15% off your purchase. That's much better. Looks like the calves are just gonna be a little skinnier than this. And then all of this seems like it's gonna be covered by this little waist thing that's gonna hang down. We'll probably make that out of cast clay. I wanna make sure these are really nice and skinny because the wrinkles we're gonna add are gonna add some more mass to them. And I don't want them to add too much. So I wanna make sure I have a nice, really skinny base to work on. All right, now for the next step, I'm going to add his feet. These are just pointy little feet, nothing too crazy. So let's get them on. And then that ankle with our spoon tool, like that. Let's do the other foot, and then we can start those folds and wrinkles. Okay, now that we've got both feet figured out, 
Let's add those folds and wrinkles. I'm gonna start at the feet and then work my way up. It seems like he's just got folds all over the place. So we know how to do this. <laughs> There we go, we've got his lower half looking pretty good. He's definitely got pants on now. All those folds and wrinkles went on pretty easily. And I'm liking where we're at. So now I'm just gonna work my way up to the torso and we're gonna add some more folds and wrinkles on that and then we're gonna go ahead and make his little belt thing. All right, so now on the torso, he's got this sort of like open shoulder shirt situation going on. So I need to do the neck and then we can start doing the shirt stuff, so. Cut this off here. You can always cut it off later, but it's always easier to do it before it's cured. There we go, very nice. There's the neck, okay. Now for those pectoral muscles. That looks a little better. Now I'm gonna do the like skin around the neck and like the collar blow, collar blown, collarbone area. And I'm just gonna use my medium ball stylus and we're gonna start pressing those in. All right, that looks pretty good. I think we got the neck figured out. Let's go ahead and add that big collar here. And then we'll work our way down with some more folds and wrinkles on the torso. And then this thing is almost ready for its first bake. Like that was, that was pretty fast. We've been doing this for what? Like an hour and 20 minutes. So making progress. in it so far okay now he looks like he's got these like little stitches or little pieces of metal I'm not really sure what they are but they're going around his collar here or the top of his shirt so we're gonna go ahead and stick those on they look like tiny little pointy teeth All right, there we go, that collar shirt area. Looks like it's done. Now let's go ahead and create this belt thing that he's got. Right now, it looks like he's got like a bit of like a loincloth type situation going on. So let's go ahead and make that first and then we'll stick the belt on on top of that. And I wanna make this cloth out of cos clay so that it stays flexible and I don't have to worry about it breaking. I'm doing a lot of Sculpey Cosplay combo sculptures lately, huh? This little sheet, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the shape that I want and then start sticking it on. So I cut this little bit of a jagged edge out here. And then this is gonna go behind the long pieces that are gonna hang down from the belt. So 
Let's get this on first. Now for those long pieces, looks like he's got you know, these little triangle pieces hanging down in the front and then we'll go ahead and do that belt. There we go. All right, now it's time to do that belt. I'm just gonna press the tops of these down. Don't need to blend them perfectly. I just don't want them pushing the belt out any more than they're already going to. So I just wanna embed them a little bit more in that clay. There we go, and this is gonna hang down on his side. So to attach it, I'm gonna use a toothpick and of course some bacon bind. Stick that toothpick in there. This is gonna help anchor it to the leg. Like this. There's the book there. Now we're gonna go ahead and create the chains out of cos clay. I'm gonna create the chains to be just like the, that roping that we've got around the belt. Now it looks like he's got another chain hanging on the other side, but it doesn't look like it's holding anything. And remember, cos clay works great with bacon bond and clay softener. He's looking pretty good, <laughs> not gonna lie. I'm pretty happy with him. I think now is the perfect time to pre-bake him and then I will come back later today or tomorrow and we'll stick on his arms, his hands, his head, and then those cool feather things on his shoulders. So sounds like a plan and I'll be right back. And we're back, this is day two. I'm hoping to have him completely finished up today. We have a good starting point here. He's nice and baked. Sculpey is hard, cos clay is soft and, or flexible I should say, and we're ready to continue. So we're gonna keep moving along here with the arms and then we're gonna do the head and hair and then paint them up. So let's get started. So his arms aren't really that different than his legs. They're just a little skinnier of course, but I just wanna make sure I put the elbows in the right spot. I think they're longer the normal human proportions. So we're gonna go ahead and 
take that into account. Make sure it's the same on both sides. This is not something you want to fix later, so just make sure that you have your armature correct before you keep going. But before I do that, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of today's video. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you're just getting started or you're an established brand, the Squarespace commerce platform supports the way you do business. Whether you're looking to sell products directly or even bill for your services, they've got you covered. Personally, I love Squarespace for their portfolios and galleries. The portfolios are so professional and so beautifully designed that I know they're gonna show my work in its best light. And I really love the customizable galleries that I can even password protect for clients. And one of my favorite Squarespace features is my ability to seamlessly sync all of my social media content to my homepage or really any page of my website for that matter. So if all of this sounds good to you, head on over to squarespace.com, start a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash aceofclay and save 10% on your first website or domain. Thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, now that the arms are looking pretty good, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the hands. I'll be making these out of cast clay. And this is so I don't have to put any armature in them. And I'm using, I believe, cast clay medium. on the thumb. Right now it looks like he's got like a little heart ring on that middle finger so I'm just gonna make a little heart and we're gonna stick it right on the top. And there's hand number one. Let's go ahead and attach this. All right, I don't know where I put my wire cutter, so we're just gonna use scissors. Don't do this too often, it will eventually ruin your scissors. <sighs> All right, I'm going to poke a hole into the hand before I stick it on the wire. Some bacon bond in there. Whoops. Throw the bacon bond in your face. I'm almost out of my last container of bacon bond that says bacon bond on it. The new ones don't say bacon bond anymore. It looks like he's got a little bracelet on too, so we're gonna have to add that. A lot of these tiny little fun details he's got. All right, then for the bracelet, let's make this out of cosplay too. It's just gonna be a very thin snake of clay. There we go, hand number one is done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the second hand off camera. Be right back. All right, that second hand is on. Looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and create that, that bracelet that he's got. All right, we've got that on there. Before I start the head, I'm gonna do these little pointy things first. This looks like he's got three or so on each elbow. I like them, they're, it's a nice little touch, I must say. Then, of course, we're gonna do these on a cosplay so they don't break. All 
right, there we go. The little elbow things are on. Now let's do the head. All right, so I'm gonna take this out of the background because they still haven't sponsored me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't do product placement in my videos. Shape out the core of his head. Now let's get that basic shape figured out. He's kind of got a long, somewhat skinny face. Instead of sticking a ball in there, I cut a sphere, I cut the ball in half. So it's like this like dome piece, because I don't want it to stick out super far. So I'm just gonna stick that in there. I may have to redo these at some point, but I just need reference for now. I want to create an indent, a little outline for where his mouth is, and then I'm going to start pressing it in to create the teeth, and then we're going to add the lips over this. Now we're gonna add his bottom lip, and then once that's on, we're gonna blend that edge in. The rest of his face, keeping that lip shape intact. There we go. Now for the top lip, we're gonna do the same thing, except it's gonna be shaped like the top lip. All right, now after a little bit more refining, I think we've arrived at Ryuk's face. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop on some ears. We're gonna attach this to the body, bake it, and then when we come back, I'm going to put the feathers on his shoulders and finish off his hair. So let's get this guy finished. His ears are pretty small and simple. And then from cosplay, let's make this tiny little earring that is probably going to break off. So we're gonna try our best to make sure it doesn't, but I just have, it's like a little heart hanging from a chain. All right, now we're gonna do some clay softener action on this guy. Actually, we're going to attach to the body first and then we're gonna put the clay softener on it. Now for the clay softener. Looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead, put him in the oven. I'm going to bake him for 45 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit on a glass baking dish. And then we'll be right back and we'll finish off his hair and stick those crazy feather things on his shoulders. Be right back. And we're back. He baked up pretty nicely. It's time to 
finish him off. We're going to start with the um, feathers on his shoulders, which I'm going to build up with some clay. And then we're going to add some cos clay over that to create the individual feathers. And then we're going to work our way up to his hair. So let's get started. Okay, I think we're good to go. He's got his feather things, his hair is done, everything's nice and smooth and he's ready for his final bake. So I'm gonna go throw him in the oven and I'll be right back and we'll get ready to paint. And we are back. Ryuk is baked and he is ready for paint. And I'm pretty excited to paint him. He's got a pretty simple color palette. I think he's mainly just black and white with like yellow eyes. So that kind of makes my life pretty easy, but he does have some silver accents like his belt buckle and the chains that are holding some of his accessories. And of course, you know, these, these bracelets here, but all in all, fairly simple color palette. And I think we're ready to go. Let's get started. And then just really quick, as usual, all the paints that I'm using in this video are folk art brand matte acrylics. If you're going to get some folk art paints like these, double check, make sure that they say matte acrylic paint. You don't want multi-surface because those are gonna be kind of satin. You don't want satin because those are satin. And then you don't want glossy because those are glossy. You want matte, these blend the best. And you can always add whatever kind of finish you want after you're done painting. You don't have to commit to the finish while you're still painting. And I just think that it's just so much easier to use the matte ones. So highly recommend matte acrylic paints. <laughs> then for the metallic parts, of course, we're going to use Folk Art Treasure Gold, which is, in my opinion, the best acrylic brush on paint you can get. All right, so we're gonna start with his face. We're gonna paint his face and his hands white, and then we're gonna go in a little bit of shading, and then we'll move on to the rest of them. All right, we've got that base coat of white on there. Let's go ahead and start shading some areas of his face. And I know in the anime, he's not shaded that, that crazy, but since I did bring him into a, the 3D space, I do want to give him a little bit of shading because it's going to drive me nuts if I just left him like this. So I'm just going to go in with a wash. So let's dry him off really good and then let's do a gray wash on his face and neck. And there and add the wash all over his face. And then we're going to brush off the excess. Shadows around the eyes, the nose area. He's got these black designs, these black like circles and this like sort of 
design around the eyes. So we're gonna go ahead and add that now. Now the lips look blue, so I'm gonna make the lips blue. Let's go ahead and get this on there. Oh, that was a big waste. The whole thing scored it out. How does that look? I think it looks pretty good. I hope all you anime fans will think he looks pretty good too because I'm really nervous to show you guys. I know you guys take it very seriously and I want to make you proud. Now the eyes are yellow. This hopefully will pull it all together. The eyes, I just want to dull them out a little bit with some black so they're not so in your face. Definitely Ryuk now. <laughs> Check it out. Okay. Now his hair is dark gray. So let's do that now for my black and white paint dries. And I'm going off this picture. So that's where I'm getting my colors from. His hair looks gray. There's a little bit of shading in it and then Looks like those feathers are black. So yeah, we're gonna do a combination of like black, white, and a couple shades of gray. Just so the whole thing is not just flat black and flat white. Now for the belt, because it's sort of already underpainted, I'm not going to put a ton of brown on it. I'm sort of just gonna brush it on and then let it pick it up. Now for the metal details, this is always the fun part. There is nothing more satisfying than painting metallic over black. I swear there's nothing better. There, I just wanna catch the details. I don't want to get in the crevices or anything like that. Now I'm just going to dry brush some dark gray over all of the black areas to get, to add a little bit more dimension and sort of bring the life a little, a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush the hair with an even lighter gray. And then I think we're done.
And he's done! My sculpture of Ryuk, my first anime sculpture, is complete. Let me know how you think I did in the comments. And go easy on me, this was my first time. I really like how he turned out. I think it's a good interpretation of the two-dimensional character. I love all the little details on him. And then just to say it again, he is right up my alley. Just the kind of character that I love to sculpt. And thank you so much for suggesting him. So if you liked this video and you want me to continue sculpting anime characters, let me know which ones you want to see me make next. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and then follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Ace of Clay. I'm also on TikTok at Ace of Clay Official, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.